Welcome to Board Game Casual Design Diaries, a series focusing on content for aspiring board game designers and things I'm working on as an aspiring designer myself. In today's episode, I thought I'd show you an idea I was working on for a two-deck combat system. These are the same cards I talked a bit about in the How to Make Cards Part 1 video. To set the context here, you and your opponent are both playing as gladiators in a head-to-head -head battle in the arena. I was trying to think through possible combat mechanisms for a gladiator theme game I'm working on. And as I was thinking about the different gladiator classes and what makes them different, it always comes down to their weaponry for me. Typical weaponry would be a sword and a shield. I'm sure we're all familiar with the classic Retiarius gladiator who fights with a trident and a net. And some might even fight with two swords. And the idea popped in my head about having two different decks. A deck for your right hand, and a deck for your left hand. So if I had a sword and a shield, I could attack with the right hand and block with my left, versus having two swords where I can attack from either hand, sacrificing some defense. In terms of gameplay, the battle is fought in a series of exchanges, where we are playing cards from our hand onto this arena-shaped game board. The game board has four slots, two on my side where I play cards, two on the opponent side where they play cards. Once the four slots are filled, that exchange is done. The cards get wiped and it's on to the next exchange. So think of this like a zoomed in snapshot of a fight where several of these exchanges are what make up the whole fight. Each player has a character board for their gladiator. Here it's just referenced by another card, but think of this as my character board where I keep track of damage. Each player starts with a hand of cards drawn from the two decks. And on my turn, I'm gonna play one card from my hand onto the board. Essentially, there are two types of cards, attack cards and defense cards. And these will vary based on my class of gladiator and therefore the types of weapons I'm holding. So here's a sample game where I, player one, am playing as the Mermio, which is like a tank class. And I'm fighting against my opponent, player two, who is fighting as the Trax, which is sort of your standard agility warrior class. I'm first up to play a card. The bottom of each card has an indicator that shows where I'm allowed to play this card. Essentially, it's either the left slot or the right slot on my side of the board, as long as that slot isn't already taken. Your opponent, of course, is on the other side, but from their point of view, they're playing the same way. Since I'm going first and my slots are empty, I can choose to play something in either the left or the right slot. I'm gonna, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and play an attack card from my right hand which goes into this slot as indicated on the card. The arrows on the card indicate the direction of play. So this standard attack goes forward, I'm attacking my opponent, and these arrows mean play goes to my opponent who can now play a card to either their left space or their right space. Again, assuming they don't already have a card in that spot. All right, now let's flip this around and talk about things from my opponent's view. Okay, here I am as player two playing as Thrax. My opponent has played an attack card that does one damage and the direction of play is either to my left or my right slot. So I have some choices here. I can play a card to block the attack with my shield in my left hand, sending play back to my foe, or I can take the damage and play an attack card from my right hand instead. So even though I'm taking the damage, I can hopefully deal some out in return. But here's a cool one. I can play this parry card, which not only blocks one point of damage, but it sends the direction of play to my right hand. So I can parry with the shield and then immediately play another card from my right hand, an attack card on my turn. And the attack here sends the direction of play back to my foe. So let's go back to player one. All right, back to player one, I'm Mermio. My previous attack was blocked by a parry and my opponent countered with an attack of his own. Direction of play is back to me, pointing to either my left or my right slot. However, because my right slot is already full, the only card I could play is something that can fit in my left slot. So I've got an attack here, a strong attack. I can't play either of those because those go into my right slot, which is already full. 
I've got a shield stun card, which is an interesting one because this actually gets played on my opponent's side. I put it down so that they can't actually play any cards. This, of course, is a waste because they've already played their cards, so I can't actually play it there anymore. Similarly, I've got this front kick that's uh, also kind of a stun. It blocks their right slot, so a player wouldn't be able to play anything in the right slot, but again, it's useless because they've already played their cards. So I guess I'll play this block card from my left hand that can go into this left slot and defends against one point of damage, negating my opponent's attack. So again, this represents a very close-up first exchange as part of the bigger battle. As player one, I swung my sword. Player two parried that attack with their left hand shield, countered with an attack of their own, which I then blocked with my shield. Neither of us take any damage since both attacks were blocked. We wipe the board and proceed to the next exchange. Now, of course, there's a lot of ins and outs I haven't figured out yet. I'm thinking in between exchanges is where players would draw some number of cards into their hands and the decision players are faced with is whether to draw from the left hand or draw from the right hand deck. But Part of me wonders if it might make sense to just merge these decks together. For now, assume each player gets to draw two cards from either deck and we head into the next exchange. In that first exchange as player one, in that last move, I was able to play a card that blocked my opponent's attack. Unfortunately though, in doing so, I sent the direction of play back to player two. This, this should have arrows on it which means that they get to go first in the next exchange. Now in hindsight, or maybe planning for a future exchange, as player one, the Mermio, since I got to go first, it probably would have been smarter for me to play this shield stun because I could actually play this on my opponent's side. They can't play any cards and it sends the attack back to me. So now I could play something like maybe this strong attack and guarantee do two damage to my opponent without them even being able to play a card in this exchange. So that's the idea of the combat system at a real high level. It's very rough around the edges. I don't even have an idea of what the surrounding game would look like. All I've done so far is create some basic cards for a few gladiator types so that I could start playtesting the concept of a two deck system. I originally came up with this idea as I was trying to figure out a combat system for a different gladiator game I'm working on called Ludus, but this is too heavy of a system for that game and really makes sense to be a game on its own. And in itself, it also needs a lot of refinement. In playtesting, the biggest issue is that the exchanges kept resulting in ties where no one was acquiring damage. This is a problem that always seems to plague me when I try to design head-to-head -head fighting games. I think I have this habit of getting really excited about designing attack mechanisms, and then I get equally, if not more excited about designing defense mechanics. So excited that I make it too easy for attacks to be negated and battles keep ending up as stalemates. In terms of next steps, I really need to figure out the right influx and rhythm of cards into players' hands. On one hand, I want the player to feel like they have some agency in choosing what card to play, as opposed to just playing a card I'm lucky enough to draw. On the other hand, it's also boring if I have plenty of safe options to play for a given slot. There needs to be some balance of risk versus strategy. I think I need the act of drawing cards or possibly choosing to skip playing a card altogether to be part of the bigger strategy. For example, maybe because of the limited number of cards in my hand, instead of playing a card to block an attack and end the exchange, it's better to take the hit now so that I get the first turn on the next exchange. Maybe I can lay out a combo. I definitely need to put more thought into it. To be totally honest, this is a bit of a lower priority than some of the other games I'm working on, so I'm not putting a ton of time into it at the moment, but I thought this two deck system was kind of a novel idea and I thought it would be interesting to share it. I think as a designer, when you get bit by the inspiration bug, you've got to take a detour to get it out of your system. So for those of you just starting out, here's a great example where you don't have to have everything worked out in your game. You can start with something as simple as a small mechanic from your game and put together something you can play test. Hey, if you've got any comments on this idea or if you've seen anything like this right hand, left hand system that's already out there, please let me know. I'd love to check it out. That's gonna do it for today's episode of Design Diaries. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for liking this video and subscribing. And I'll see you next time here on Board Game Casual.